Good morning. Good morning. So that was uh, one of the one of the hardest challenges in ministry is is how do you top Easter? Where do you go from the mountain top on Easter morning in which the stone is rolled away and Christ is risen and, and Christ is calling us by name? And, and I thought about you know that the 2,000 years ago of that story, and I thought about today's story. And how blessed we are to see the evolution of time, and how blessed we have been to see that, that every year God does something bigger and better and more exciting so that we would know He's alive. Amen? He, he takes the time out to say, the thread that binds us all together is a risen King. Amen? He takes the time out to say that that thread can never be broken. It is impermeable. It, is the, it can't even be overtaxed because Christ is alive. Amen? And he said that thread that blesses us is what empowers your church, our church, each of us as Christians to tell the story. So going forward then, it's about taking what we've learned and what we've, what we've seen in the risen king and creating spiritual revival not only in ourselves but in the church and in the community this week we have the greatest opportunity known to mankind men and women and children from a church are invited to go to a schoolyard and pray for teachers and children we're invited. We're not forcing our way in. We're invited because there's a hunger and a desire to know more, to know about the common thread that makes everything clear. Amen? So I expect you here, if possible. Come, walk with us, drive over to East, if possible, and pray for the teachers and the children in the world before us that spiritual revival happens this year. This morning I want to look at, you may have picked up in, in, in the scripture about the gift of holiness. Changing our lives to be more God-like. Perfecting our relationship with God to allow Him to use us. Anybody not have the warm fuzzies when the kids were doing their thing? They're braver than I am. They sing. I turn off my mic and hide in the corner. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But this morning, I want us to, to understand that another gift of Easter, another gift of a risen Savior is He imparts Himself in each of us so that we too can take a journey of holiness, to take a journey of transformation that allows people of the dark world, people who haven't found that thread, to ask, and to seek, and to most importantly, invite us into their lives. Thursday morning, we just go over and pray. We, we tell a few stories in Scripture. We ask the children. The most beautiful thing about the National Day of Prayer is an easel that a little five-year-old or six-year-old can walk up and say, pray for my grandma, pray for my aunt, pray for this. We'll bring those back, and we'll hang them on the wall like we've always done. We'll pray for those for the summertime. We'll pray for our children's need. But in this journey of holiness, I want to begin by the understanding that holiness only comes in our life by engaging the relationship with the risen king. The video that we're about to see is called A Prayer for Holiness. Just listen and, and, and allow the words of, 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 the, of the author to speak for us as we prepare ourselves for the journey of holiness. Today we ask you to hear our prayers. We ask for healing. In a day where we are so connected to the world, set us apart. In a time of great unrest and uncertainty, we ask for holiness. To search our hearts, Renew our minds and help us love like you love us. Make us holy. 
use us to do your will on this earth. God, today we ask that you would restore us. Gather up the bits and pieces of our souls and mend them with your loving hand. Search out those parts that we try to hide from you. Today, God, we invite you in. Our faith is in Jesus Christ. We trust you. May we be set apart for you. May we be holy. Strength. 
The second thing that holiness requires is obedience to what? The Word of God, which endures through all time. It's written. There's nothing else we can say. If, if we can't adhere to this, if we can't believe in this, then, then we just come to sing songs. But if we do believe in this, and we allow this to be the thing that drives each of us, we begin to understand holiness. We begin to understand love. Holiness then is also an allegiance to the truth, understanding, believing, and never doubting the Word of God. Holiness requires that allegiance so that we can grow, that we can prosper, and then we can move forward. Holiness also requires true love, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. That's something that we probably can never imagine in our life. And only understand the beauty of it when we're offered a seat in the highest kingdom. True love. When we start to engage those four things, submission, obedience, truth, and love, something wonderful happens. Truth is unleashed. It's unleashed. We become, become, we become beautiful. And, and, and wonderful, and people want to know what's going on in our lives, what's happening in our lives, what makes us so different from the world around us. Look around. You're unleashing truth. You're exactly what God has created to change the world and make the world a better place. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. There's one door. Anybody remember, what was it, left to make a deal, curtain number one, two, or three? And the biggest choice was choosing. We don't have to choose. Jesus says, follow me, and you're free. Follow me, and you will experience my Father's love. Follow me, and you will experience eternal life. Follow me and all that you want that you want and all that you need are at your fingertips. That's the way. It's that simple. We're here today to adhere our hearts and minds to the truth of Easter that we've been born again through a risen king. Amen. I'm born again because Christ lives. Because he is the thread that binds us together. I'm born again because I want to be Christ-like and I, and I accept the challenge to be a world changer. I'm born again because I want to live a journey of holiness that affects other people. I'm born again because I long to be a butterfly, a God sighting. So someone in the world, when I'm saying I, I'm saying we, church, so that we become instruments of God's glory. It's only then we'll be able to know how to love one another deeply from the heart. I'm learning that. That's the, that's the greatest thing about my journey of faith, is I am learning the beauty of love. It is so much bigger and, 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 and wonderful and, and fulfilling than I ever thought it would could be in my life because I'm allowing God to teach me what true love is. Amen? Think about it. Think how narrow-minded and, and bullish we were in our younger years. We had all the answers. I did. I was, I was 20 years old. I had a college degree. I got promoted at work. My golly, I was Superman. And then I met him. And he touched me. And he asked me to listen. And then, all I longed to be was a father, a servant, and a slave to that love. Today, our young people, if you go back to that scriptures, uh, verse 24, for all people are like grass. And all their glory are like beautiful flowers of the field. The 
the grass withers and the flowers fall away. But being born again in Jesus Christ, we become an imperishable seed. One that constantly rejuvenates itself, constantly is in the act of blooming, constantly is in the act of awe and glory. And the wonder of Christ. Those, those little ones, with all the energy and the voice, and the excitement are the imperishable seeds that we've grown into. You see, there was a time in all of our lives, I think, when we probably stood up here and did the same thing. Or attempted to. Maybe it might not have been right here, but it was somewhere. There, that time may have only happened when, when you were 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80. But that time happens where Jesus comes into your heart and you become not just a flower of the world, but a flower of Christ's kingdom. Something beautifully shaped and transformed and forever blooming and forever changing for the world to see that Christ Jesus is alive and will never leave us or forsake us. Amen? That's the flower I want to be. Not just something beautiful and glorious. I mean, I'd love to say I look like that. But I'm the untrimmed bush. Yeah, who, you know honeysuckles, how glorious they are in the springtime, how like yellow comes out, and they smell good for like two weeks. And then the flowers fall off. And then they're kind of ugly. They're a scraggly little bush with not a lot of depth, not a lot of character. And, and so we get out the hedge trimmers to try to make them round and beautiful again. But they're just ugly until springtime comes again. It's not that way with Jesus. It's not that way when we allow him to create in us the unperishable seed that forever blooms and forever changes and forever offers love to the world. Offers us the ability to learn to love one another deeply from the heart. Church, God is doing great things here at Otter Pie. And we're just scratching the surface. The next Children's Sunday will be the next month that we have five Sundays. Look out. They'll have a lot more time to practice. And a lot more time to sing. And a lot more time to bloom into the imperishable seed of children of God. We gotta be here sitting in the front rows. We gotta make sure that these beautiful little children know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are loved and they are God's masterpiece. That, that they never walk alone, but they are always <laughs> and forever part of, part of a kingdom that has no end. That was cute. <laughs> I think yours is shorter than mine. <laughs> Beloved, never stop dreaming about what we can be tomorrow. I was told a story when I came here that I couldn't believe. God's church would never be like that. The it was a lie. See, I know in my heart that Audubon is alive. And I know it's well, and I know it's flourishing. And its greatest days are ahead because we are born again through a risen king. Amen? Amen. We are born again because Jesus is alive. Amen? Amen? We are born again because Christ is risen. He is risen okay, come on. <laughs> Christ is risen. He is risen. Stand up. Give me praise. <laughs> Christ is risen. He is risen. See, the microphone got that. <laughs> so that young man in Afghanistan or, or in Iran tunes in tonight to fight a church. He hears a church say, Christ is risen, and he is risen indeed. And I, too, am a perishable seed of Jesus Christ that has been called to be a world changer so that beautiful children and beautiful voices and people just like you and me won't be a honeysuckle, will be a blooming bush of life. 
these children are our task to mold and to shape and to love into the perishable seeds of hope that is Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. A wonderful and glorious Father, we come to you because you are alive. We come to you because you have called us here to this place. Lord, we come to be holy, to be shaped and transformed into your image, to change the world for the honor and glory and restoration of your kingdom. Lord, instill in us revival. <laughs> instill in us holiness. Bind us together with the thread of life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. <clears throat> this is our prayer, Lord, because you live and you are our God, our rock, and our redeemer. In the precious and powerful name of our risen King, all God's people said, Amen. Amen.